Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Friend, do you want to quickly respond to that? Because she cut you off. I'm going to let you respond to this. Yeah, I can, I can quickly respond to that. Uh, so the, uh, uh, you have to bring, bring up, so the. Uh, well, let me bring it, let me help you. Yeah, go ahead. So, Prompt me. so <laughs> instead of using a SWAT team, if a suspect is being cooperative and in your testimony and in your experience, as an FBI agent and a law enforcement officer, it's not necessary to use a SWAT team to go in with guns ablazing and pulled out and going after an individual when that individual is cooperating. And that wasn't that part of your testimony? That's part of my testimony. It's part of my, what I brought forward in my whistleblower disclosure. And that's in your experience as how many violent criminals have you arrested? I've arrested over 150 and I have five years of SWAT experience. And you didn't have to use there wasn't necess necessity in some of those circumstances to use SWAT team because the individual was cooperating? Never a single time. And in your testimony, the individual that you were referring to that a SWAT team should not have been used on but was being used on for political purposes was somebody that was cooperating, correct? Yes. Based on your testimony, everybody else's testimony, which by the way, I wanna thank you guys for being here. I know it takes a lot of courage to do it. I wanna thank you for your service as a military veteran myself who served, prob I was probably in Iraq when some of you guys were there. I wanna thank you for that. I wanna thank you for standing up for the Constitution for America uh, because I know that this is difficult to go through, what your families are going through, being uh, barricaded out of having your personal belongings, not being able to get pay, the FBI taking away your security clearances so you can't get a job. I commend you for standing up for American values and commend you for standing up for what you believe are huge misgrievances that are going on at the FBI. And based on y'all's testimony, the report that we have seen, the FBI has turned into the enforcement arm of the Democratic Party, going after pro-life individuals, going after individuals who were not in restricted areas on January 6th, who were not violent on January 6th, using SWAT teams to go after them to try to intimidate them. And then when officers like yourself, who have served our country, who have served the FBI, who have served in law enforcement, suddenly want to raise concerns and and use the whistleblower status to be able to, hey, you know, this, this isn't right. This isn't the way that we should be treating the need of these individuals. This isn't fair. Suddenly, the FBI is shutting you out, taking away your clearances, taking away your pay, shutting you down so that your families can't even survive financially. So I want to thank you for um, your testimony here today, and I hope the American people will gloss over the lies that have been perpetrated on you today for the truth that is underneath every single one of your statements. Uh, egregious abuse, misallocation of law enforcement resources, misconduct in leadership ranks of the FBI, and I've been here five years, and during that period of time, Director Ray and A.G. Garland have both sat in desks just like that under oath and testified that they would not retaliate against whistleblowers. And it's my understanding, Mr. Friend, that you went through all of the required regulations at the FBI in order to raise your concerns to your supervisors. Is that correct? Yes. So you followed inside protocol for the FBI, utilizing whistleblower statute protection information regulations through the FBI to make your, your complaints and information be known. Yes. And you did that to your supervisors? Three levels of supervisors. Three levels of supervisors, and the response to that was losing your security clearance, shutting you out, losing your job, taking away your pay. That's correct. I, I, it's, I, I'm so frustrated and angry, and I don't have you know, only a minute and a half left um, to, to try to display the level of corruption, weaponization, politicization that has occurred at the highest levels of the FBI and the DOJ. And both Director Ray and Mary Garland have sat there and testified that there's no retribution for whistleblowers. No, we don't retaliate against whistleblowers, but we have testimony, and I'm a lawyer too, and testimony is a fact in evidence that that exactly is what is going on in the FBI and the DOJ. Just quickly talk about how the inflation, Mr. Friend, of the domestic violence or the, the, the um, statistics as it relates to January 6th, how they were inflating those statistics to make it look like there was a bunch more cases than there really was. Well, typically, you would, uh, you would investigate January 6th as one case with lots of subjects, but instead, the uh, decision was made to open up a separate case for every single individual there, and instead of on paper investigating them from the Washington field office, uh, spreading and disseminating those to the field offices around the country, and uh, if, if the individual lived in that area. So it, in effect, made it look like there was uh, domestic terrorism 
cases and, and activities that were going on around the 56 field offices when, in fact, the cases were really all from Washington, D.C., and Washington field office had a task force that was responsible for calling the shots in all those cases. Thank you guys for being here. My time's expired. Gentleman yields back. Uh, we have votes on the floor to our witnesses, uh, so we will take